Hi. Hi. I'm Chip Hamlin. And I'm Earl Prescott. And this is... Tackle Talk with Chip and Earl. Oh, you said that a little differently. How you doing today, Earl? Chip? Oh. How, you, how you doing, Earl? Chip, I'm doing pretty great. Good. How are you doing today, Chip? Oh, well, I'm doing better than a slice of American cheese on a Baconator Junior. That's pretty good. I think so. We're out here on the Rocky Lake, Colorado, once again. And today, we're doing some bass fishing. We're hunting for white bass. That's right. Using the bass jig once again. And today, we're determined to catch ourselves a white bass. Chip, I know that you can make it happen and you'll bring home the trophy. Well, I'll certainly do my best. Oh, I think I just saw a deer run by in the woods. Did you see that? I think a deer, eight point buck just ran by. Well, it's uh, too bad we didn't bring a uh, rifle. Uh, it's in my trunk. Hunting rifle. I'll get it next time. So the a white. Don't shoot the gun though. It might scare away the fishes. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something, Chip. If this bass jig doesn't get the job done. Maybe the rifle will. That's a good point, Earl, you know. Desperate times. Call for desperate measures. It'd be like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> You'd have to put the <laughs> fish in a barrel first, though. Yeah, that's a good point. But to a giant, this lake looks like a tiny barrel. Maybe, if you were huge. I'm going to go ahead and cast over here. Yeah. And, uh, today I'm trying a little different technique. Normally I employ the stop and go, but today I'm trying to lift and drop. You want to pull up on the rod, lift it up, and let it fall, just yeah. like that. Sounds pretty good. And do it again. The lift and drop method as it would suggest is when you lift the lure you let it and settle then and, and then, then drop it yeah it's doing great work I can tell it's just driving the fishes crazy probably it's driving me crazy <laughs> hold on to your horses there El Prescott Chip, this is a talk show, so what do you say we get a phone caller on the, on the line? I think it's a great idea, Earl. Let's see who comes on the line. Hi, you're on with Chip and Earl. What's on your mind? Hey, Chip and Earl, this is Chester down in uh, from uh, Tennessee. Hey, I got a hey, question Chester. for you about uh, child rearing, raising. I got a young one myself. He's a he's a bit of a handful, you know. He gets into all kinds of trouble, and sometimes it really pisses me off. And I gotta, you know, I need him to learn. I can't have him be causing trouble, otherwise he's gonna end up in prison one day. So I get to whooping him, you know. I, I spank him, I hit him, and I think it helps him learn. Now, my sister come over, she visit, you know. I put her up in my home. I'm really hospitable. And she starts coming in here and she's telling me I can't spank my child. Now, I don't think it's, you know, she's in a position to really tell me how to raise my own child. I don't think a, a woman ought to do that to a man ever. But, uh, so I got to ask you, what do you think? I mean, is spanking an okay thing to do? Yes. No. No. Chip? 
Earl Prescott. Spanking. It's an effective teaching strategy for a child. And every child needs to know his boundaries. No. Uh, I'm going to have to forcefully disagree with you on this one. Chip, there have been numerous studies done that scientifically prove that there is a negative correlation well, between... Oh, I gotta stop you right there. Sometimes I, uh... You know, I get a little frustrated when you, uh... cite your science talk. And I can tell you from my own experience. Negative correlation between children whose parents would spank them and some of their decisions later in life. They make bad decisions and they use violence as a way of expressing themselves. So spanking is not an effective disciplinary method. Earl, let me tell you something. If I wasn't spanked as a child, I would probably be a devil worshiper in prison addicted to the crack cocaine and that's something I know for a fact so if anything I think you're the negative correlation chip what did your did your father spank you my father my mother my brother my sister my aunt and my uncle and my grandma, and my granddad. Sometimes, the neighbors. Just pull down your trousers and bare hand your... Girl, you bring up a good point. So the color there. When your kids get to be of a certain age and they get to be a little bit stronger, sometimes a bare hand isn't enough. Another thing you can try is a bell or a piece of metal. The other thing you can do I find is really effective is a uh, use the spank as a sexual maneuver. Sometimes women, just like children, need a good spank. This spice things up. Is that what you used to do with um, Denise? Yes. You cast over there by those rocks there. Yeah, that's a good idea. Seem to be getting some good luck over there. Not too close though. I don't want to get a snag. I had a lot of snags lately, and quite frankly, the cost of the lures is really starting to add up. Chip, this reminds me. There's been um. People have been talking about ways to help ourselves um, financially. And this is not to say that we're in any kind of financial trouble here at Tackle Talk, but we're there in a are little bit of financial trouble. The fish aren't biting. I'm trying to sell the fish. and uh, Sorry, I'll need there to cut are, you off there. Um, internet sites that are called GoFundMe and Kickstarter websites where you pretty much give people money for free and somebody a good friend of mine Clinton Murphy suggested that we set up a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe page but I don't know anything about the computers numbers, codes 
inner interweb night sites. It's all a dangerous place. So, is Clinton Murphy the one who got uh, impaled by that baseball bat? Yes. Huh. Good for him. I'm gonna switch over to the worms here. That's a good idea, Chip. And oh. also a good idea might be to put some red worms on that hook. Yeah, let's want to take a look here. Maybe, uh, what about some small minnows? Good for the crappie and the white bass. That's a good idea. Oh. Well. Oh well. Chip. Now that we've got our small minnows on the hook, maybe it's a good time to listen to who we've got on the line. It's a good idea, no oh, Prescott. We've got a phone caller here who wants to talk to us. Let's see what they have on their mind. Uh, hey Chip, uh, hey Earl, how you guys doing today? Good, thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Uh, <laughs> well, as much ask, as a, a question as it is a, a confession, uh, I, I, I definitely need your help about something, uh, a little bit on edge about it. Uh, kind of get something off my chest, if you would uh, you know, just, just be there to hear me out. Okay, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Uh, okay, so uh, I, I did, I did something. Uh, I did something. I did something that I uh, uh, deeply uh, regret. Uh, okay. Um, how do I put this? Uh, well, if I had a choice to go back and do it again, I wouldn't. Um, it, it's kind of tough to explain. Uh, and I know, I knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong. I knew I shouldn't have done it, but the circumstances just got the better of me, and I just. I, Oh God! Oh God! What am I gonna do? Oh God! I'm not really sure. Though. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Just uh, um, take a couple breaths. You're okay. So I was uh, in the city over the past weekend, and um, a situation uh, came up. Uh, I uh, needed to cross the road, and uh, I saw this guy across the street, and. Uh, I couldn't see a crosswalk anywhere nearby, and I didn't want to go looking for one, so I just crossed the road without being in a crosswalk. Chip Earl, uh, how do I say this? You're talking to a jaywalker. Ah, uh, God. Earl, you wanna... Is there anything I can do to get this off my... Uh, get this off my conscience, uh, that would be great. <laughs> uh, until then, um, I don't know how I'm going to sleep at night. Uh, thanks, Chip. Uh, thanks, Earl. <laughs> Guys, uh, love the show. Keep doing what you're doing. And uh, thanks again. Okay, Earl, uh, you uh, check with the lawyers. Uh, is it okay for us to be uh, talking with uh, professed, proclaimed criminals? Chip, I mean... On the felony scale, jaywalking is at the absolute bottom of the bottom of the scale. Um, Earl, he, he confessed to a serious crime there. Chip, he, he crossed the road. He didn't get hit by a car. He's, I mean, I think we've all jaywalked before, haven't we? Not like a big deal, right? I've never done it. I was told it was wrong. If you hurry. And so I don't do it. But Earl? You... Sometimes I get a little bit worried when you start excusing illegal behavior. It's not... I mean, you can't get arrested. It's not a serious felony. It's not like he murdered somebody. It's not like he murdered somebody. He just well, crossed the... What if he crossed the street, not in a crosswalk, thinking there's no problem? A driver starts driving up, doesn't see him, has to swerve, and swerves into a telephone pole, and it splits his car right in half and cracks his skull open. Then what? 
Okay. What then? I. That's a. That. I don't think that would ever happen, though. I'm a little bit surprised that you'd want to take the chance, though. Chip. I don't. I didn't think about that, though. I didn't think about that. I mean, he, he he made it. He didn't hurt anybody. I don't think anybody got hurt. When when what I was, what was their name again? They didn't. He didn't say didn't it. Say, didn't well, say it. whatever it is, I think you should have a hard time sleeping tonight. I hope it's difficult for at least five to seven days. Chip, that's a bit. That's a bit. But frankly, I think we maybe should call the authorities. I'm gonna track his phone, his phone number, and could we do that? I have to I have to ask Andy. Andy's our computer man. He knows all the numbers on the keyboard. We'll do that after the show. He knows all the letters too. I crossed the road one time, and I, and I didn't get nothing happened. Nothing happened. Chip. You don't think any less of, of me, do you? Knowing that I'm a jaywalker, too? Chip? I'm gonna switch back Chip. down over to the uh, bass jig, I think. Chip, don't... And uh, I'm gonna switch spots down to the other one. Chip, don't... Come on. Earl, I need a Come minute on, here. Chip. Okay, if you could just... Come on, Chip. Just give me... A minute. You know, this reminds me of a time I used to know these two guys. And they were really, really good friends. They were really close. Best friends. We used to spend a lot of time together fishing and hunting. And then one day, one of the friends found out that the other friend crossed the road not in a crosswalk and found out that they were a jaywalker. And then the other friend didn't want to be the other friend's friend anymore. That's the story. Oh, we got a fish on the line. I don't hate to cut you off there, but this is important. Would you look <gasps> at that? Would you look at that? Chip. Earl, I'm having a moment here. Can't even... Finally I got can't even control bags. my emotions anymore. How much do you think we could sell this for? Five, maybe ten dollars? We might be able to use that to catch a bus. Dackle Talk Season 2, coming soon. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. That's a big start. That was a beautiful fish, Chip. That was a beautiful fish. That reminds me of a time... When two guys, best friends, spent a lot of time fishing and hunting, caught a white bass in Colorado. Put themselves back on the map. You know what I'm talking about in the story? Is that, uh... What was his name? Clinton? The one who got Clint impaled Murphy. with the baseball bat. Clinton Murphy. No, I'm talking about Chip Hamlin and Earl Prescott. Us. I don't get it. Oh, oh! I thought we had another one there. there. Yeah. It's like they, uh, good, they got like a spot right, right around here. here, right in front of us. I'm gonna start further out though, just in case. It's almost like they're. Right under our noses. <laughs> Fish don't have noses. How do they breathe? They got the gills. What do cats have? Cats have whiskers. <laughs> cats breathe through their whiskers? They also meow. <laughs> I 
like cats. Cats are nice. I like fish more. Yeah, we're... You know what I like even more? Catfish. <laughs> you were really setting me up there, old Prescott. <laughs> oh, would well, you look at this? This is a, this is a fighter oh boy. here. Oh, Chip, hold me back, girl. Chip, hold He's on. Pull me right into the lake. Chip, hold on. I don't want to break the line. I'm trying not to break the line. Try not to go oh. too hard here. Oh, oh. Here oh, we Chip, go. reel him in. Would you look another at another white, white, white bass? bass. He was a tough that. one. It's a beautiful fish. It's a, it's a beautiful one. fish. They are nice. Look at that. Yeah. that. Look at him. Look at his fins. Where are the gills? And they're uh, right where the whiskers are. I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, that was a good catch there, Chip this Hamlin. Was, uh, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Yeah, we, maybe we might be able to afford to make it back home. I was worried we might have to get a dishwasher job or something yeah. just to have enough cash. Well, get those internet donation sites off the ground up and running. Yeah, that would definitely help. Anyways, uh, thanks everyone for watching and thanks to the callers for calling in. Um, it's been a good fishing day today. Uh, I've been Chip Hamlin. And I'm Earl Prescott. And this is Tackle Talk with Chip and Earl. So long. <laughs>